بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لهبة في الله شيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب أو الصابي حفظ الله تعالى he said بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم he said I advise my brothers for the sake of Allah the students of knowledge with every short advice and there is not adequate time uh, with very short advice and there is not adequate time uh, to do justice so it will be simple there have been many books written about the benefits of knowledge and the people of knowledge so they advised with sincerity to Allah ikhlas lillah Allah the almighty and glorified said wama umiru illa li'abudullaha mukhlisina lahu din they were not commanded except to worship Allah sincerely, and for him is the religion. In Al-Bukhari and Muslim, uh, in Bukhari and Muslim, it was narrated upon Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا عَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِرِيَنْ مَنَاوَى فَمَنْ كَانَ الْحِجَّةُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِي فَحِجَّةُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِي وَمَنْ كَانَ الْحِجَّةُ إِلَّا الدُّنْيَا يَسِيبَهَا وَمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَحِجَّةُ إِلَّا مَا هَجِرَا إِلَيْهِ رواه شيخان in the hadith of Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said verily actions are tied to the intentions and everyone will get that for which he intended so whoever migrates for Allah and his messenger then he has migrated for Allah and his messenger and whoever migrates for this worldly life and attains it or to take some woman in marriage, then his migration was that was for that for which he migrated. Then the Shaykh said, therefore, do not seek knowledge for a degree or some other reasons. Ahabatifillah. The Shaykh began with something which is very important for us to internalize and practice. And that is the importance of ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That all of our worship is for Allah and directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything that we do. And that, of course, the other shart, the other condition for our deeds to be accepted is that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what are those two conditions again? The first one is that you have sincerity for your deeds to be accepted, meaning you worship Allah alone. You don't worship Abdul Qadir al-Jailani. You don't worship uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. You don't worship uh, the Naqshbandi uh, Sheikh. You don't wa worship uh, Aga Khan. You don't worship uh, the, Br the Vrelawi uh, elders or Sheikhs. None of them, but all of your worship goes to Allah Azza wa Jal. And the second condition of Habatifillah is that it's in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. So, meaning, where is this relevant for us that the first condition for having our deeds accepted is sincerity? And so the Shaykh advised with being sincere. And this is what you'll find in the books of Ilm that describe Ilm and, and Fadail and the Fadail, fadail al Ilm, Talib al Ilm, and so forth. You'll find in the books. Um, the books of hadith, that they begin with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because everything we do, if we fail in our endeavor, but we were sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we strove to find, to, to practice the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we have success. But if we did it for some other reason, even if it was in accordance with the sunnah in general, but it was not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we did it to show off in front of the people, we did it to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did it for whatever, for so-and-so or so-and-so. That this will be like dust in the wind. It will not benefit us. It will be completely rejected as a deed. So Talib al-ilm is an actual act of ibadah. Uh, um, seeking Islamic knowledge is an act of worship if it is done in accordance with the sunnah, uh, if it is done uh, with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking knowledge from the ulama, uh, reading the books, the books and the tafsir, the, the explanations of the Quran, and reading the shuruhat of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu reading the, the explanations of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu and reading the books in aqidah and the explanations by the ulama of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that this will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as you're practicing that knowledge. 
And the Salaf used to say, Al Amal Thamarat al Ilm, that the fruits of uh, that deeds are the fruits of actions, meaning that when you seek knowledge, I mean deeds, I'm sorry, deeds are the fruits of knowledge, so that when you plant the seeds of knowledge, the fruit and the thamarat that you get from them is practice. The knowledge is not just for for gaining and for gaining status or uh, for elevating oneself to be seen as someone of knowledge, to be seen as better than your peers or whatever the reason, various reasons that people seek knowledge. Likewise, as the Sheikh mentioned, he said, therefore do not seek knowledge for a degree or some other reasons or just for attaining a degree that you seek Islamic knowledge for that. That doesn't discourage seeking knowledge and gaining a degree but meaning that your purpose for attaining Islamic knowledge is to practice, not to attain the degree. So the degree is another benefit, a worldly benefit of perhaps doing a, a, a degree in Islamic studies or, or, you know, in hadith or fiqh or whatever, so that maybe you'll find employment, maybe you'll become an imam, maybe you'll this, maybe that. But the main reason, the reason, a sub of that you're seeking that knowledge is to come closer to Allah. That should be the purpose. And then that makes it an act of worship. And so I want to mention a hadith, which is so important and so relevant to this first thing, uh, this first uh, piece of advice that the, the sheikh gave, and which is sincerity. And this is the hadith, and we'll do our best to, to remember it, as I probably have forgotten some of it. But the Prophet ﷺ mentioned three people. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said that the first three to be judged on the day of judgment, and he mentioned the first one, he said, a man will be brought who was martyred. And his favor, uh, the, the favor that Allah bestowed upon him will be made to light, meaning that he uh, will, it will be mentioned that he was a great mujahid. And Allah will question him and say, what, what did you do for my sake? I, uh, so the man will respond by saying, I fought for your sake until I was martyred. And Allah will say to him, you have lied, but rather you did it so the people would say that you were brave. And they said this. And then the man will be dragged on his face into the hellfire. That shows us that we have to have sincerity in all acts of worship. And, and these are some of the highest deeds you can do in Islam. But however, these same deeds can end you into the hellfire if they're not done for, this, uh, for the sole purpose of worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, then he mentioned the second person. وَرَجْلٌ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَّمَهُ Quran. <laughs> The second one was the scholar or the, the person who recited the Qur'an. They knew the Qur'an beautifully. And they will be brought before Allah and their, their, the, 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 the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them will be made known. 
And then Allah will say, well, what, what have you done? What have you done for, for my sake? And they will say, I sought knowledge. And then I taught it. And I read the Quran for your sake. Or recited the Quran or I was proficient in the Quran for your sake. And then Allah will say, you lied, kithabed. But rather you did it in, so that the people would say that you were an alim. And you did it so that the people would say you were a beautiful reciter. And it was said, meaning he got his reward in this life. He got, the people praised him. They gave him wealth maybe. Maybe they, they propped him up in his chair. And they, he had status and he was talked about on the internet and he was this and he was that and his books were read and, and he became famous and blah, blah, blah and what have you. So it was said about him, these things, that he was an alam. He's a great reciter. And uh, Allah exposed him and then this person will be dragged into the hellfire on their face. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَرَجِلٌ وَاسَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَاطَعَهُ مِنْ إِسْنَافِ الْمَالِ كُلِّهِ فَأُوْتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَّفُهُ النِّعَمُ وَفَعَرَفَهَا قَالَ فَمَعَهُ مَلْتَ فِيهَا قَالَ مَا تَرَكْتُ مِنْ سَبِيلَ مَا تَرَكْتُ مِنْ سَبِيلَ أَنْ تُحِبُّ وَنْ يَنْفَقَ فِيهَا إِلَّا أَنْ فَقْتُ فِيهَا لَكْ قال كذبت ولكنك فعلت لي قال هو جواد فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب لوجهي ثم ألكي في النار. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in mentioning the third person, showing the, uh, the third person meaning, uh, and he said that this is the person who was a a philanthropist, meaning that they spent wealth in, and he said. I, I, he was asked, so what did you do for me? He said, I didn't fail to spend from one of the many ways in your cause, except that I did it. It's beautiful in Arabic. I didn't fail to spend money in a way in which you love, except that I did it. This is what this man says. And Allah will say to him, Kidabd, you lied. But rather you did it so that the people would say you were uh, you were generous. Or a spendthrift. And it was said about you. And then this man will be thrown, uh, dragged on his face and thrown into the hellfire. Wa'iyadh billah min dhalika. Ahabat fillah the shahid here the main point is that they lacked ikhlas lillah. And they did the greatest deeds, some of the greatest deeds you can do in Islam, being martyred for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not, and we're not talking about suicide bombers and uh, what ISIL or ISIS or Daesh, as they're called in Arabic, and or Boko Haram or Ash-Shabaab, these cowardly acts of attacking women and children in malls and elderly people and blowing them up on buses and kidnapping girls. We're not talking about cowards and wicked devils that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about in an authentic hadith, Al-Khawarij Kilab al nar We're not talking about them. We're not talking about those who are the Khawarij, those people uh, who fit the description of the, the some of the first extremists to appear in the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam who the Prophet ﷺ said were the dogs of the hellfire. The dogs of the hellfire. And he also said that he would fight them if they were, if he was alive in their time. Letting us know the permissibility to fight the Khawarij like Daesh and Boko Haram and Ash-Shabaab to repel their wicked and destructive evil towards humanity. Wa'iyadhan billah minhu. So, as we we're mentioning, these are the highest deeds you can do and seeking knowledge and teaching it. That's one of the greatest deeds you can, you can leave behind. And the third being to spend in sadaqah. How many ayat in the Quran? وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ دِينُ وَهُنَفَا وَيُكِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ 
وَيُتُوا زَكَا وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيْمَةِ Paying the zakat, paying charity, paying the alms tax, that these are some of the highest deeds that you can do in Islam, bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those same deeds can get you thrown into the fire if you do them for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship yourself, to prop up yourself, to prop up your group, to prop up your sect, or for some other worldly gain. They can be the, a source of destruction for you. And how do we know that those are some of the greatest deeds? What did the Prophet sallallahu and we already mentioned this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said in Sahih Muslim, إِذَا مَاتَ مَرْئِينَ قَتَوَ عَمَلَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ الصدق جارية العلم ينتفع به وعمل صالحا وولد صالحا يدعو له. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in Sahih Muslim. He said, when a person dies, his deeds will cease except three. He said. Uh, the continuous charity, and we already explained this in the pa in the past uh, dars, in the past lesson. Sadaqa jariyan wa ilm yantav'abi and knowledge that the people benefit from. And a righteous child that supplicates for them on their behalf after they died. And we ask Allah the Almighty for us to be blessed with all three of those. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So letting us know, Habatifillah, that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these great acts of worship is uh, an essential component for having them accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Talib al ilm falls under that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm nafiyah, ruskan tayyibu, amalim muttaqabbilin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi. وصحبه وسلم